Hi, I'm Dr. Bill White. I'm with the American Orthodontic Society and I'm doing a good many videos here on things that we lectured on for years. And I want to talk about something that's been very important to me and it has helped me uh, this tremendous amount learning how to do this one thing or how to level an arch and how to use these intruding arches. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, I want to have this happen to me on a, a young man came in uh, back in 1971. It was April of 71, I think, when he came in and he wanted his teeth straightened just out of the blue. And uh, I'm just going to move right on into the guy and try to make this thing as uh, quick as we can. Uh, let me get him over here and get the, excuse me, you got to deal this thing back up. All right. All right. He looks kind of hippie, which he was, and he came in and wanted his teeth straightened. Now, I didn't take a lot of records on him. Uh, back then, it was in 71, I had just started, uh, uh, just went into nothing but orthodontics in 1970. If you look real close at this picture, which is not very good, but we did them in, had to send off the slides. This guy can't get his teeth together. You can see that later on some close-up pictures. Well, he came in about six months or so before this and wanted his teeth straightened, and he had a tremendous deep bite. He could hardly see any of his lower teeth. And so we bracketed. We didn't bracket anything back then. We didn't have brackets. Uh, we banded his uh, cuspid to cuspid, both upper and lower, and put six-year motor bands on and ran a couple of arch wires from the motor to the anterior teeth. And the upper one, we had it way up high, and we pulled it down and hooked it to the teeth. The lower one was way down here. We pulled it up and hooked it to the teeth. And these little wires were in his mouth for about six months. I don't remember ever seeing the guy. I think I may have seen him once, but then he took off. He was a kind of a hippie. And he didn't come back to the office for six full months. And sometimes you learn a lot from what happens in a crazy manner. But I learned something this time that really helped me through the years. And I hope you can uh, see this and use it. It is still a very, very valuable thing to do. So here are the two little wires. I didn't get to take a picture of them then. That's when you had cameras and you had to send the film off. And sometimes some of my film got messed up on him, so I don't have any starting pictures of the guy. But here are the two little wires we put in. They had little loops and they were they forced forced them down to raise the upper and up to, to lower the bottom teeth. Uh, here is the fellas. Uh, models. This, I'm going to show you the top and the side model right here. Uh, at least we took some pretty good models back in those days. Uh, you can barely see his lower teeth right in underneath here. If you look hard enough, you can uh, see them there. But his upper teeth virtually covered his lower teeth. And the guy has a class one, pretty much class one occlusion in the back on both sides of his mouth. Now we'll go over and I think I'll show you the side. No, I'm showing you from the inside. I just turned the camera around and this is my evidence. This was 7 of 1971. Right here. You can see the one over there. You can see it up there too. This was April of 1971. Now that's uh, nearly 30 years before the 2000, and we're 2017 right now. So uh, this is a, a long time, and uh, I 
started in 71 doing nothing but orthodontic, but I'd been doing a lot of prior to that, but I cut out everything except orthodontics and working on TMJ that was involved in the orthodontics. But you see where his lower teeth fit right up here in the roof of his mouth, and the upper teeth came down and almost covered the lower teeth, you can see here. So I just want you to remember that. Now the cuspids touched one another over here, and when we open this up, the cuspids were still in contact, but these teeth are up here, and the guy can't get his teeth together, so he comes back in after six uh, six months. And uh, one of the we had several operators back then. I had assistants that do a lot of work, and they were very good at that. And they just did what they could do legally, by the way. And uh, one came back and said, "Doc White." You better come back in here and look, look at this guy. Uh, he hadn't had been, been in for six months with his braces on. So I went back in the room, and here he is, six months late, had two little arch wires in there. These teeth right here were down here somewhere, and these were up in the roof of the mouth on that guy. And these two little arch wires just left alone for six months, coming right off of the molar, didn't do anything but touch these six teeth up here. And this guy cannot chew with his front teeth, and he comes in because he can't bite through the lettuce or he can't chew his fingernails or whatever it was that uh, sent him in. And these bands, now the bands were real thin, and they may have bumped some, but not very much. And they, of course, they're from here up, this is done by those two wires. Now you got to sit down, think about that. If you've done any orthodontics, know that. It is four times harder to intrude two teeth the same size and the same bone to shove one in the bone than it is to have one exfoliate. So that the force that's bringing these teeth up and these teeth down right here is coming off of these two molars over here, the, the six, six year molars on both sides. Now, let me let you look at those two molars and see what has happened to them. Now, to me, this was an eye opener, and I learned a lot of things during my many years, I think been doing this for about 61 years or 62, something like that, started 55. Now, let's look at the side. Here are two secure molars, and they are the only thing that was providing this, to pick this up right here, you would have to shove that secure molar down with exactly the same force that you're picking these up, and that took a lot of force to raise these four teeth out here and this molar I will raise those lines so you can see it's contacting real hard right here on front and not so much on the back but you'd think it would have prized those molars completely out of there but it didn't it didn't do that that taught me something this guy chewed I mean he chewed hard on these teeth and so we learned that we put something on top of these teeth. If you have a a high angle case, I mean somebody that they're from their chin to the nose is too far, and it makes them look bad, and they come in with a closed dental bite for you to open, and if you open that bite, it makes those teeth come together. It puts force on them to come together, and the high angle gets worse, and they look worse unless you know how to do this one thing. And uh, so you can laugh if you want to, but if you don't think you chew on these blocks, you just stick some on your own teeth. And so that we could come in and build these acrylic blocks and make both of them the same size. You know, you put one on and then put another soft acrylic and close that, and you, you have about a two or three millimeter 
pad down here, and this both sides of the mouth there over here too. And the person closes down this, and nothing touches that here. They're biting totally in here. Now the arch wire is coming way up here, pulling up. And it's pulling up on that, and it's pushing down on this with exactly the same force going down as this is. I mean, yes, of this is going down because this is pulling these teeth up over here on this side. See, you bend the arch right down, so it's pulling the teeth up over there. And just remember, it's just as much force here as it is over here. These as much force down here as you have going up over here. Now. You got a high angle case, you come in and build this up right here. I will guarantee you if they do their chewing over here, they have to do their chewing over here, it will keep these teeth intact while you elevate the other teeth. And I've done some high angle cases and measure the GOG and the SN and all the cephalometric mesh you want to put on there and you can control that. In fact, you might even lower it down some uh, time you level it out like that. So that is important to learn. And so I learned about the intruding wire. Now I have a little closer and you can see those motors. See, they just hit right here. But I imagine there's not a whole lot of force on the other teeth in there. These two teeth are taking most of the the load and so the muscle structure of that guy's face and back here in his chewing and up here everything the muscle structure in here is forcing these teeth up and closing that it's opening the bite and it's not affecting the vertical height of the face and that is a critical thing to learn if you want to come out with a good looking facial structure on somebody that comes into you with a little bit of a high vertical in here and that detracts from their looks very bad so this is worth your time listening to this but I, don't, uh, uh, I guess it's worth your time if you do any of this kind of work it is now I had nothing in this guy's mouth but six rack bands and two bands back here. These teeth were being forced up and these were being forced down but they were occluding like mad on the mesial part of those molars and the muscle structure kept them in place and that's something you need to know if you're going to mess around with orthodontics and you don't know how to treat a high angle case. If you're just starting you send them off to somebody that does know how. See. Uh, don't screw around with a high angle case. You'll make them look worse unless you really know what you're doing. And that's why we want to get you in the American Orthodontic Society. We got people in there that know how to teach you and know how to show you what to do and teach you to do the right thing. We're interested in doing darn good orthodontics, not a bunch of junk. And so that's what these videos, I hope, end up doing. Now we go back to the models again. You see where they were to start with right here and I'll erase that and I'll go to the next view. Now this guy is pretty much class one when he comes in with this deep deep bite and he's class one. They didn't crowd up as bad as I thought they would and so we're going to take the four and two teeth. The customers are still in contact. So the uppers are going up, the lowers are going down, and the force is coming off of these six-year molars. Every bit of it. This is exactly the same force as this is right, right up in here. That's just a rule of physics. What do you want to call it? All right, so we're going to raise those up. And now this molar back here at the back, you can see these contacts were better so it kind of tilted this more or a little this more and much of their contact was on the mesial part of these two molar teeth back here now people do dumb crazy things and it's not your fault it's something you couldn't 
do on them, but they do it themselves. If you have some documentation on it, I have learned several critical things in orthodox from dumb, darn things that people did uh, that you couldn't possibly go in there and, and well, you could, but the law wouldn't let you do that, you know. But they do it to themselves, and you can learn from it. And I sure learned something that helped me for years in orthodox. I can open a deep bite now a lot quicker than most people. If you're trying to open one with a single wire, I can open it with an intruding wire and another wire in there in two, three months quicker than you can open it the other way. And I hope you learn how to do that. We're going to show some other cases and I'm going to divide this up in a lot of little videos in there. All right, here's the upper arch. Uh, that's the model of it. There's the lower arch right there. And that's it together again and again. And here's my man. He came back in. And here's that picture. If you can make this out, he, I think I have a little closer up picture of it. Here's the self we took on him. And this is, I think, after he opened up. The teeth were lower than that. And there are the two little wires. That wouldn't take anything for those two little wires and what they did and what they showed me to do. Uh, so I'm going to close this part out and that is how the I'm calling it my own arch, my own intruding wire because I did it years ago and I've lectured on it all over the United States and a bunch of foreign countries as many people as I could and so a lot of people are using that now and uh, they may claim it their own and maybe somebody came up with it and I never heard about it but I never heard about it and I did this one in 1971 and I've been teaching it all those years I'm just now getting out to putting a video on it so we're going to close this thing down hope you enjoy this and if you take this and learn it and learn to use this, I'm going to show you some other uh, videos that will be in more detail on how to build it and all that other. So we'll shut up now and y'all can uh, do what you want to. Hope you get to use this.